Ah, the open road at night. So many joys it can bring to you, just driving off into the unknown without a destination in mind. But it can also bring many fears, especially on those cold, rainy nights when we are trying to get somewhere and the rain just makes our perception of things a little bit more difficult and a little bit more sinister. As is the case in tonight's story, another fantastic one from Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so you could send your stories to me and I could read them all to you. Well, my dear friends, it's Monday, and once again it's time to sit back and relax with your favourite drink, and listen. I sighed as the first few raindrops splattered against my windshield. Of course it was raining, as if my driving conditions hadn't been bad enough already. Even without the rain, I was by myself, in the middle of absolutely nowhere, at some ungodly hour in the middle of the night. It was because of my grandma that I was here, really. Not that dying had been her fault, but we'd never really been close, so it was just strange that she put me in her will. We lived in different states, so visits were rare. She'd always seemed distant. Well, I'd never been to a funeral before. My parents were already in Montana waiting for me to arrive. I wondered what they were up to right now. I knew I should have stopped at that last little town. As dubious as that motel had looked, it was better than falling asleep at the wheel. Maybe I could just park at the edge of the road and spend the night in my car. I was certainly tired enough to consider it. My eyelids had been drooping for miles, and now the calming patter of the rain and methodical motion of the windshield wipers nearly had me asleep. I could almost close my eyes when I spotted something caught in my headlights, startling me out of my stupor. There was something small and furry lying on the road, probably a squirrel. My stomach lurched uncomfortably, as the car bumped over the thing. Glancing in my rear view, I saw that I was not the first to run over this poor creature. There was blood spattered all around it, only just now starting to be washed away by the rain. It occurred to me what a pitiful way that would be to go. Just lying in the road, slowly decomposing. Your carcass a mild annoyance to drivers passing through. I shivered, despite the stuffiness of the air around me. The quiet seemed almost uncomfortable now, and I turned on the radio in an attempt to dispel it. There weren't many stations I could get out here, and the ones I did have were full of static. I was willing to bet I was out of cell range too. I left the dial on a fuzzy-sounding jazz station and resigned myself to a boring drive. Soon, the surprise of seeing the roadkill had worn off, and I was nodding again. Hoping against hope, I reached into the bag lying on the seat next to me, groping around for a five-hour energy drink I had yet to chug. Unsurprisingly, I found nothing. Not quite ready to give up, I dragged the bag onto my lap and started pouring through it, looking down and taking a hand off the wheel to do so. I knew I shouldn't really have, but I could have sworn... There was one more somewhere in the... <clears throat> I was interrupted as something hit the hood of the car. My hands flew back to the wheel and the car swerved as I overcorrected its course. My knuckles were sheet white. I put on the brakes and the car skidded to a stop, sliding around on the slick pavement. Shaken, I got out of the car, hoping it wasn't too badly damaged. When I saw the front of the vehicle, however... I nearly shrieked, not because of the shallow dent on the hood, but because of what had put it there. The severed head of a large raccoon slowly rolled off of my car, trailing blood behind it. It fell to the ground with an audible squelch. Looking back down the road to where I'd hit the thing, I saw the rest of his body, just as mutilated as the squirrel had been. I stared at it for a few seconds trying not to be sick. Suddenly, a movement caught my eye. There was something else out there, in the forest on one side of the road. 
I hurriedly got back in my car, now sopping wet. I turned the car back in the direction I'd been going in and hit the gas pedal, eager to get away from the unpleasant mess of roadkill. There were coyotes in Montana, I remembered, and, more rarely, bears. I nervously eyed the rainy darkness around me, wondering what creatures could be lurking out there. It would have to be a pack of coyotes to get the head off a raccoon, a thought that did nothing to comfort me. They couldn't get me if it was in my car, right? I was safe in here, so long as I didn't have to get out of the car again. The next town had to be close, I told myself. I didn't care how sleazy the motel looked, or how sketchy the other occupants. I just wanted off of this road. And away from marauding packs of coyotes, real or imagined. The next twenty or so miles were spent in high alert, but I didn't spot any animals. I did think I saw something moving in the forest a few times, but it was hard to be sure through the rain. I knew it couldn't have been an animal, though, because to keep up with my car on the highway, it would have to have been running at 70 miles an hour. Since this was absolutely ridiculous, I allowed myself to relax a bit. Although, clearly I hadn't relaxed very much, because when my cell phone went off, I nearly jumped out of my skin. Fumbling through my bag, I accepted the call and put it to my ear. Hello? Hi, sweetie. Have you stopped at a hotel yet? It was my mom, calling to check in on me. The reception was awful, but it was nice to know I could get connection at all. No, I'm still driving. Are you guys staying with Grandpa? Still driving? Taylor, it's two in the morning. You know you shouldn't be out at this hour. She dropped her tone to a concerned whisper, which was more of a hiss through the static. That's when crazy people are on the road. I know, Mum, I know. I'm driving safely, and I haven't seen anyone for miles. Promise me you'll stop at the next chance you get. Yeah, I promise. I wondered for a moment whether I should tell her about the roadkill. It was silly, I knew, but it was kind of creeping me out. Mum, this might sound a little paranoid, but I've been seeing... What? Sorry. Cutting out. Her voice was garbled, and it was more interference than words. I sighed. I'll call you back when I get into town, okay? The line went dead, cutting me off halfway through my goodbye. I looked down at my phone. The measly one bar had dropped to a taunting, no service message. I glared at it as if my frustration would change anything. Hearing my mum's voice had made me feel as if I wasn't alone, just for a little bit. But now the quiet darkness felt more oppressive than ever. Reluctantly, I stuck the phone back into my pocket. My eyes settled back onto the road. I was already slipping back into the monotony that had consumed my earlier hours. But that was when I saw the deer. It was a huge stag, with magnificent antlers and powerful build. I would have said that it was a gorgeous animal, if it hadn't been splayed out in the middle of the highway, inside spilling out of its body, blood seeping out onto the pavement. I barely had time to get my door open before violently throwing up. The way the enormous animal had been dismembered wouldn't let me chalk this one up to roadkill. It had definitely been killed by something very powerful, very frightening and, judging by the steam coming off the stag's corpse, very close. I dragged my sleeve across my mouth to wipe away the bile and shut my door firmly. I was trembling like a leaf in a windstorm. There were mountain lions here, I knew. They had killed people before, when they were desperate enough, and deer too. But didn't they drag their kills away? The stag had just been left here, dismembered but uneaten, in the middle of the road. Whatever had done this, I was not about to stick around long enough to find out. I stomped on the gas pedal, and the car shot away like a firework. I was going about 90 miles an hour, 
heedless of the pouring rain and the pitch dark night. All traces of sleepiness were gone now, replaced by a terror fueled adrenaline that kept my foot glued to the floor. I was almost to the next town, I told myself. Almost there. Almost there. I was going to make it. Well, so long as there were no other cars on the road, at this speed a crash would be disastrous and fatal. I didn't slow down though. I was far more frightened by whatever was behind me than what might potentially be ahead. I glanced wildly to either side of me. Terrifying culprits of the roadkill danced through my mind, each more unlikely than the last. A pack of wolves, a bear, an asylum escapee, a serial killer, some unknown, unholy monster waiting in the darkness, the type you'd expect to find hiding under your bed or lurking in your closet. But none of my brain's panic possibilities could have prepared me for what happened next. Somewhere in the road ahead of me, there was a screech of braking tires, then a sickening crunch of metal folding in on itself. I heard a woman's voice scream. Her shriek rose in pitch and volume until it was cut off abruptly. I slowed the car down. A wreck flashed in my headlights. The driver had swerved off the road, judging by the skid marks, and crashed into a ditch. Against my better judgment... I stopped the car. Something large and pale darted in front of my headlights, heading off the road. A creature that size shouldn't have been able to move that quick. My heart caught in my throat. Is anyone out there? The call came from right outside my vehicle. I couldn't see you'd said it, though I assumed it was the woman who'd screamed. Getting out of my car was risky. God only knew what might be waiting for me. Please, help me. She sounded like she was in a lot of pain. Oh, that did it for me. I stepped out of the car. She was laying on the pavement, just outside her open door. Well, opened is a strong word. It looked like it had been wrenched off, with deep gouge marks in the metal. Looking down at the woman, I saw similar gashes across her stomach and torso. My stomach turned, but I knew I had to help her. I steeled myself and forced a smile. I'm here to help you. We're going to get you to a hospital. You're going to be all right. From the state of her, I very much doubted she was going to be all right. But telling her that wouldn't help. What did this to you? Her eyes grew wide, showing the whites. Monster, she choked out, followed by bloody spittle. She coughed. Leave me before it comes back. Go. I swallowed hard. So, she knew she was dying. But I couldn't just abandon her, could I? More coughs racked her body followed by several mouthfuls of blood. Her internal bleeding must have been bad. She didn't have long. I'll give you a ride to the hospital, okay? Where were you coming from? Is it close? She just gave me a sad, bloody smile. Hold on, I've got you. I opened my car door and half lifted, half dragged the woman into my back seat. Thanks. Her voice was barely a whisper. Won't die alone. I got back into the driver's seat, looking nervously after the creature. I stomped on the gas. God, what the hell was I doing? This was insane. A monster? What had I seen lope away from her wreck? Was she delirious? How much time did she have? Could we possibly make it wherever she'd been driving from? Questions swirled through my head. I ignored them and just drove. We raced along the highway at maximum speed. Her labored breathing told me she was still hanging in there. I heard something ping 
softly. My gas light was on. It was almost empty. I swore explosively. God, oh, we're almost out of gas. Did you pass any towns on your way that are nearby? I heard her take a strained breath. Close, she managed before coughing weakly. Okay, we could do close. We could make it. I pressed the pedal harder into the floor, racing against not only time and some monster, but the gas tank too. God, things just kept getting better and better, didn't they? We drove in silence, except for the drumming rain and her heavy breaths, becoming more difficult and sporadic by the minute. A ways ahead, perhaps a mile or so, I glimpsed the lights of civilization through the rain. Hey, I see a town. Look, just hang in there, okay? Only a few minutes and you'll be in the hospital, with doctors to take care of you and everything. You'll be all right. We're going to make it. We are. Just as I finished my convoluted message of hope, the car made an ominous sputtering sound and then started to coast. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'd run out of gas. We were screwed. The car closed to a stop. I swear I saw something move in the forest to my right. Okay, look. We're less than a half a mile from the town. I... Th I know we'll be able to make it there. You can just lean on me. I'll carry you, if that's what it's going to take. And I can shout for help when we get closer. It'll only take ten minutes, okay? She didn't appear to have the strength to respond. I opened my car door and went around to hers. Her breathing was less labored now, but extremely shallow. Blood dribbled from her mouth. Stephanie, she said softly, surprising me. Is that your name? She gave me the slightest nod of her head. Well, I'm glad I met you, Stephanie. I'm Taylor. We're going to make it, all right? But her eyes started to glaze over. Stephanie took one last shuddering breath. She went utterly limp, and the light faded from her eyes. I was left holding a corpse in the rain. I wanted to cry, to collapse into the wet pavement and mourn for one I'd known for barely a few minutes, one who I had almost convinced myself was going to live. And I think I would have just sat down and given up, if it hadn't been for a disturbing noise behind me. I turned around to see, well, I wasn't sure what it was, but my God, it was horrifying. It was pale and immensely tall, even though it was hunched over like a cripple. It had milky white eyes and a gaping, slavering maw, lined with bloody teeth. Its arms were unnaturally long. They dangled listlessly by its side like an ape's. The thing was on the other side of the road from me, with nothing but faltering raindrops between me and it. It looked like it was grinning at me. I ran. I didn't care where I was going. The forest was probably a bad idea, but I went in anyway. The town. The town was close. I steered towards the artificial light. It was close. We were close. We were going to make it. No, just me now. Stephanie was back there with that thing. She'd been right. It was a monster. So, I was going to make it then. Something crashed into the bushes behind me. It was it. I ran faster. My breath was coming in short gasps from the adrenaline and the exercise. Was I going the right way? Where were the lights? From the town? I had to find the lights. The thing was getting closer. I heard it, and I felt it. I found myself praying, muttering gibberish under my breath. I wasn't religious. 
No god would ever let a monstrosity like the one behind me exist. I knew this, but I prayed anyway. Now I could hear its breath. It sounded wet, like the forest around me. Oh god, please don't let me die here. I'm gonna make it. Keep it away from me, please. I pleaded with the nothingness. No use, though. The thing was practically on top of me. Something sank into my back. It was wet and sharp. I stumbled and fell face first onto the damp ground. The lights. They must be coming from the town. I saw them. I was close. I would make it. I could imagine getting into the town, finding a hotel, telling someone about all this crazy everything. Confessing, really. Oh, a soft, dry bed. Heat. I could almost feel it. The silky pillowcase against my cheek. The soft sheets wrapping me up. Suffusing me with warmth. I smiled softly. I could see the light. So I uh, start up tonight by saying thank you to all the well-wishers for my uh, impending move to Holland. It is coming this week. This may be the last story I record here in Turkey before the move. Not sure, but uh, might just well be. Absolutely terrified, but excited as well. So I'll keep you informed <laughs> as things go on and progress well, hopefully. Oh, big changes indeed, but well... What's life without a bit of fear and a bit of excitement? Got to take that leap into the unknown sometimes, don't you? Well, wish me the best, please do. <laughs> well, I of course, we'll be back on Wednesday. Not quite sure what with, but I don't want to let you guys down. So until then, sweet dreams and bye-bye. Thank you so much for choosing to spend your time listening to me. Now, if you enjoyed the Dr. Creepin experience, then come find me on Facebook. Come chat with me on Twitter. Listen to the background music and download it if you like on SoundCloud. Drop by the store, pick up a t-shirt. And, importantly, if you've got a story you'd like me to read, send it to Dr. Creepin's Vault, the subreddit I set up so that I could read your stories. Now... Looking forward to seeing you all again real soon, so come check me out, okay? <laughs>